Last time I reviewed a Flashforge machine, it seemed like it was designed by someone who'd never actually lifted their head to look at the modern world of 3D printing. It technically functioned, but only in the same way your NAND's VHS still technically functions, whilst everyone else is watching DVDs or streaming content. It's one of those experiences where you find yourself halfway through a print before wondering whether the machine was built before or after they discovered the concept of firmware updates. Everything about it felt like it was made in a vacuum and not the good kind, as if the development team had been kept underground since 2014 and were just now learning that other printers exist. Back then, they wouldn't have recognized a modern workflow if it dragged itself across their PEI sheet. So when Flashforge sent me the AD5X, I genuinely thought, here we go again, let's see what fresh nonsense awaits. And honestly, I've been thrown off because this machine actually works well. As in, I've had it for a few weeks now and it hasn't once made me want to throw it through a wall. And that in itself is more surprising than most of the things I've printed this year. Hi, I'm Ross and this is Farhammer Videos. Now this is a brief one, I'll put about as much effort in as Flashforge did. Talking about setup, this thing arrives mostly pre-assembled, but really that's because it's just a frame. Unclamp the LCD and slide it into its mounting socket, attach the filament feeder arm to the right hand side, and then push and twist the feeder itself to lock it into place. Attach the four spring loaded filament winders on the same side, all of which are numbered. Connect up the four PTFE tubes and the hub in the top of the hot end, and then plug in the power cable. This is in the back, switch it on, let it do its own self checks, and setup wise, there you are, you're done. It's basic, it's solid. Now in terms of specs, this is a 220 by 220 by 220 millimeter build volume. So it's your standard cube, but it is on the smaller side of modern Core XY printers. The bed is a spring steel PEI sheet that just works, something I actually struggled with on my last Flashforge machine that still needed to use glue. It slides into place easily, and I'm a big fan of the plastic grip on the front, as small of an enhancement that that actually is. All the leveling is automatic, which again, solid modern feature. The hot end's a bit odd though. The nozzle is held in with a magnetic bracket, which is great for quick swap, and you simply need to unlatch it and pull it away. But it was also interesting to see that the heat sink actually unfolds. Now, I haven't actually experienced an extruder jam on this, and I've done a lot of filament swaps, but watching the online videos, it doesn't look like it's the easiest job to access the extruder gear mechanism if you do face an issue in there. Mounting filament is a case of pressing it onto the pegs on the right hand side and partially feeding it into the automated feeder. From here, that will then grab it and take care of everything else, prepping it ready to be fed on demand. Just be aware though that only spools with an inner diameter of 52 to 58 millimeters will fit on these prongs. Now thankfully, more brands seem to be adopting this as a standard because of all the filament I have lying around, I wasn't actually able to find one that didn't fit. Now, overall, I like automated filament feeders, but I would prefer at least the option of something more enclosed, which it doesn't seem like Flashforge have. Now then, let's talk connectivity. All of the IO, all of the main elements, are sensibly on the back, including the power and rocker switch. And I assume, like many print farms, I'm happy to see this actually has an ethernet socket. And you also have Wi-Fi as an option too, to connect to your local network. Now, let's address the control screen. It's fine, it's functional, it's got a USB port on the side, but it's resistive, not capacitive, which means instead of tapping, you're pressing firmly. And even then, sometimes it responds, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it jumps back to the home screen just to remind you who's in charge. Overall, I did find it a little frustrating when I've got other cheaper machines that are capacitive and much easier to press. Now menu layout is simple, it's easy to find what you're after because there's not much here. It's nothing flashy. It's clearly using the same skin as every other modern printer. It works, there's just no innovation or advancement here either. And when loading filament, you can select both the color and material type in each slot in order to sync that back to the slicer. But speaking of legacy, there's also no camera, not installed as standard anyway. This is an extra and you'll need to buy it if you want remote monitoring. Yep, that makes sense. For those of you who want to avoid the extra cost of a machine if you won't use this function, I'm just not sure the price of this machine reflects that of a more budget-friendly device in the first place. At least at the time of recording this video anyway, please don't have a go at me months from now when you find this in a sale. But here's the 
funny thing. Flash Forge also sells an enclosure kit, which is great, right? Well, no, because that kit only includes the clear acrylic panels and nothing else. You actually have to print all the frame and mounting brackets yourself. So the enclosure kit actually wants you to print your own parts, which again, it's good for keeping the cost down. But ideally, you'd want to print this in something like ABS, which in case you're not familiar with irony, is one of the main filaments that actually benefits from an enclosure in the first place. So in order to print this reliably, you probably actually already want a printer with an enclosure. I'd expect you'd want to print an enclosure in a more heat resistant material like ABS, but in order to print ABS well, you really need a printer with an enclosure. Sure, yeah, you could print it in PETG or PLA, but the result will be a machine that does little more than prevent the average breeze from affecting your ABS print, rather than actually having a chamber which controls the environment properly to print materials like ABS. Yeah, are you with me? It's a bit of a catch-22. It's genuinely one of the more Eastern printer brand things I've ever seen. It's perfectly circular logic. But honestly, in day-to-day -day use, this is where the AD5X surprised me because it's been decent, reassuringly decent. In my experience, once a print starts, it just runs. No drama, no skipped steps, no sudden mystery errors at 92%. Print quality is solid, PLA prints come out smooth, bridging is clean, supports snap off easily, overhangs are handled nicely, bottom layers are crisp. My first layer printing test was solid with only some slight bubbling in one corner. My first actual test print on this, which was their logo as a test print built onto the printer, had one of the smoothest top layers I've ever seen. So I dove straight in and printed a multicolor Borderlands mask, and I've got to be honest, it looks incredible. It's really good quality. But the reason I wanted to print this specifically is as a perfect example of why I've been avoiding multicolor prints on filament changer machines. I know I roughly talk about it, but then avoid doing it because of the waste. Here, for this one mask, I've got an entire tub. Then there's the purge time. This whole print took almost two days. Now, yeah, you can reduce this waste volume and time by reducing the amount of material purging it does in the slicer or by purging into infill too. But because this was a mostly white print, I wanted to avoid any chance of cross-contamination and this bin is the result. It's not a criticism of Flash Forge. Don't hold it against this printer. It's just how multicolor FDM with filament changes work. And I don't think I'm the only one who's kind of gone, yeah, we love multicolor prints, but because of this waste, so many of us would rather just print individual elements in their respective colors and glue them together afterwards. Am I alone on this? Because it feels like that's the next advancement in 3D printing. This type of filament changing seems to be steadily going the way of 3D TVs you just can't buy them anymore. But quickly covering the slicer, out of the box, this uses Flash Forge's own version of Orca Slicer, but you can just use base Orca Slicer, which to be honest, makes more sense to me because it's got all the latest Orca updates in it, rather than being a Flash Forge derivative where we get updates when Flash Forge get time to integrate them we may as well just use Orca. But finally, and just an aside, I wanted to show something else off call that I got my hands on. Handboost sent me their C1, which is basically an ultrasonic cutter. Now, I actually thought this didn't work at first because I couldn't see the blade vibrating when it was turned on, but it was only after touching it to bare plastic, you can hear this subtle high-pitched squeal as it effortlessly just slices through like a hot knife through butter. Now, they wanted me to give my opinions on this. I'll be honest, it's a little heavy due to the back and mechanics which well it stops it being super comfortable to hold and yeah it's a little bit unwieldy but once you get used to it it is incredibly handy to have probably as handy as it is dangerous so yeah if you grab one be careful when using it i'll put a link in the description but i absolutely love mine but yeah final thoughts on the machine there's not really much here the flash forger adventure ad5x is a great machine but it seems built by a company that still behaves like it's the only company making 3d printers they're just blind to what the competition are doing in terms of features and price. It is like it was designed in a bubble, one where other brands doing the same thing, either better or cheaper, don't exist. One where including a camera would be a revolutionary act or a new UI means changing the font. And yet, 
what we've got here is genuinely good. I like it. It's easy to set up, easy to use, it prints well, and it doesn't overpromise. It's stable, it's quiet, and it gets the job done. Yeah, it's not exciting, it's not trend setting, but it seems dependable. And that makes it perfect for people who are perhaps tired of flashy gimmicks or just want a solid printer that doesn't give them anxiety. It's the kind of printer you buy because you don't want to support the big flashy brands with their weird policies. You know who I mean. But you also don't want to drop into the bargain bin lottery with budget brands either. It is middle tier in a good way. Mediocre, but perfectly so. A reliable workhorse, just with the face of a pensioner who still calls the internet the web. Now, if this is what you're after, grab one. I would appreciate it if you use my affiliate links in the description before making a purchase. I'll net a commission at no cost to you when you do that, and that's how I can afford to run the channel. I want to say thanks for watching. Big love to the members. Your names are on screen now. You legends are another reason I keep this going. Please, if you're watching, consider joining up if you want early access, bonus content, Discord roles, or your name in lights, or all of it. So please do that, or don't. I won't cry. Probably. At least not if you bother doing the like and subscribe thing. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, they're in their own little world. Fohammer out.